Welcome to Inscription, the awesome card game horror slash roguelikes. Maybe roguelike? Maybe. Yeah, roguelike horror card game, I guess you could call it. It released today. You can wish, or actually, you can't wish list. You can buy it. It's on the Steam store. You can get it. Link in the description below. I'd probably suggest, because even if you do watch me play, there's always ways for you to play absolutely differently. So we'll get to see at least. And I'm also going to obviously. Wait, continue. Wait, what? Well, that's interesting. I guess we have to figure out what's up. Oh, yeah, we have to click and drag. Uh. Flicker. Graphics, I want it max. Good. Uh -huh, everything looks good. I don't know. Can't, can't complain. But it wants me to continue. Hmm. Can't remember if this is what happened in the demo or not. Let's see how it, how different it is. But either way, like I played the demo not long ago. I'm gonna hope I can beat the start. At the start, there was like a bear that killed me. I'm gonna see if there's also different ways I can play or change things up because there's just so many customizable ways you can alter the pathways or your deck. Another challenger. It has been ages. Perhaps you have forgotten how this game is played. Allow me to remind you. I would remember, and he says the cute little so I love him. He's so cute and sassy. Wait, well, it's the, yeah, the, the squirrel. I have to try to, because before I died to the bear, and you can beat the bear, but I died to it because I used up my extras on the side and other things, and made a few mistakes. I'm playing my stoat. An honorable death, play the stoat. Wolves require two sacrifices, you don't have enough. Ringing the bell to end your turn. So I'll be doing my best, though. Your stoat stands unopposed. The number on the left is attack power, and yes. I, I know how to play, but we had to go through this again. I try to make my stoat, or at least any unit, as strong and broken as possible, but eh. We just have to see. Your stoat stands in the way of my coyote. My coyote dealt two damage to your stoat. That means your stoat's health is two less. If a creature has zero, it dies. Is your turn again. You may draw from the deck from, uh... Or you may draw the squirrel. Um, obviously we need squirrels. How dull. We need squirrels. It's like, uh, the stoat's gonna die. Actually, no, the stoat won't die. So, I mean, yeah, just... That, that's it. I don't, I don't want to sacrifice the stoat. You know you can play more than one card. Yes, I, I do. I'm quite aware. I'll do the squirrel! I won't sacrifice my beautiful stoat. Even he forgives me. But nonetheless, he's sleeping. And then they'll automatically attack. Bonk, bonk. Because otherwise it's like... Let me recall your story. It's like... What was it? It's always good to try to attack and do so much damage, like overwhelmingly do so much damage so you get bonus currency that is important for later. You're lost deep in the forest. A single path revealed itself. The best thing that you could probably do to learning how to play the game better though is learning what these symbols mean so you know which way is the right way for you, like what you're prepared most for. For when the path does split and you're like, okay, which Chicons mean what and which one would be best for me. Right now, I can't remember and I haven't played enough to really memorize because it, you know, it, just, it was just a demo. Two denizens of the forest approach you tentatively. And the undying cat, sacrificing the poor beast, does not kill it. The caustic, the caustic adder damage from its poison is always lethal. Yeah, but I want enemies to die then and there so they don't do damage for me later. So you know what? You may, you only one may grace your paltry deck. Go with the cat. Some of the creatures of the forest seemed willing to follow you. We'll try not to die this time, though, yeah. You came across an abandoned sack. Scroll the bottle. We have to keep definitely for later. And the pliers, which are absolutely horrible. Boulder. You were ambushed while crossing some rough terrain. 
I was ambushed by a bunch of fucking trees. You didn't sacrifice me, how kind. Maybe you'll help me. Play along for now. See, before I sacrificed the squirrel, so we get to at least see he's happy and he sees us as kind, which is nice. Get over. Yeah. Uh, you may now see my moves ahead of time. Okay. So he's got the wolf in time and a boulder, but uh, mm, we're gonna have the permanent. You are lacking sacrifices for the cat, but you do. Oh wait, I need a sacrifice for the cat. Oh, well, isn't that interesting? Oh, okay, well. In goes the cat. And... Here we go. Need I remind you, your items... No! I must keep them. So we put in the squirrel, we have the squirrel get eaten by the cat, and then the cat can be constantly fed on by everything else. But the thing I'd have to question is... Yeah, you can't just constantly sacrifice it. The cat is just one forever. Okay, well, that's fine. Mind you, uh, mind the ambitious wolf cub, it ages swiftly. Red snapper, though. Then the turtle, bonk, bonk. He's weak, but he's got great defense. The problem will obviously be if the wolf gets by the boulder, then problems. I want to try to get by without... The airborne bat flies over the creature is to direct attack directly. Don't care. Ha, my bat flew right over your stoat. I don't care. Uh, damn it, I didn't want wolf. He needs two bloods. Uh, but anyways, we're not... Get rid of the boulder, that's fine. I need a squirrel. Bonkity boop. Bonkity boop. Yeah, now he's really fucked. Thanks to the cat. Bonk. Mmm. Another wolf. Well, I can't really do anything, so. Bonk, bonk, bonk! See, an extra. Beautiful. You prevailed and trekked onwards past the now bloodied terrain. That's playing properly. I'll still probably make mistakes, because I'm playing with just like. I play normally like what I would do with chess, and that's why I'm horrible at chess. I play with instincts and. You know, using my experience without much forethought. I, I prefer sort of playing games like that. Like, I don't be like, hmm, well, if I do this and then I do this, and strategically, nine moves ahead of time, I'll be in this situation, which is then I will win. I'm always like, hmm, this feels right. And, of course, being if you're rough in something or you're inexperienced, mistakes will happen. But... The key is when you rely on instincts or experience that you do have, and you don't give a fuck about making mistakes because I don't feel fucking embarrassed, which then makes me feel afraid of making embarrassments, because embarrassment is so cringe and so embarrassing. Oh my god, I don't want people to see me being embarrassed and making mistakes. Fuck that kind of way of living. Fuck it. For me, I am inexperienced. I'm fine with that. I will make mistakes. But the key is you get to see and I get to feel the evolution of me being inexperienced learning from my mistakes in real time and then you seeing me get better and better without changing my mindset because I'll still be instinctive based or experience based and not you I'm not like strategically thinking ahead I'm just simply going based on what my brain understands as the rules rather than you know I don't know my, my frontal cortex doing heavy thinking being like hmm hmm Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, five. I'm going to play 9D chess against you. It's just, eh. The Meek Sparrow. Inexpensive, feeble, a flying creature. But since I have the cat, the sparrow might be okay. Young wolf, you know, he's so cute. The young wolf cub, though, actually. I mean, the wolf, wolf is good. Sparrow at least has two health, but he attacks over the enemies. But he's weak. Having flying enemies would be great for many reasons. The problem is, the sparrow is only good in a aisle where there's no enemy coming at it. Because if it attacks over the enemy, that means in the next turn, the enemy's going to kill the sparrow. You have to put the sparrow in a place where it's like, it'll attack over a boulder, basically. 
So as long as there's an obstacle that's on the enemy's terrain and he doesn't get rid of it or can't get rid of the terrain, the sparrow will constantly fly over the boulder or over the log and attack. So, you know what? I'm going to go with the sparrow this time rather than the other way around. Ah, yes, the sacrifice. You spun, stumbled into some strange stones in the mist. What if I made my stove a flyer? You're compelled to choose a worthy sacrifice, one that will be lost forever. Mm. Yes, it, 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 since I have a little bit of knowledge of what happens, I'll be like, okay, well, the stoat wants it, wants to be sacrificed or be used in this. So either this means if I use this, it means the stoat will be permanently... Actually, wait. That means I could put the stoat on the field, he'll attack, but he can also be permanently sacrificed. It's either I make the stoat a flyer, or I make the stoat something I can constantly feed off of. Which would be kind of mean, because the, the stoat is, you know, self-aware. A flying but the problem with the idea of a flying stoat is... Hmm. The stoat isn't really strong. We'll see then. Pick me, yeah. You looked upon your menagerie? 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 I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, a healthy host. He says pick me, so I mean... Fine. You want it. He, he, he still wants it, even though the, it technically means he's going to be... What an... Uh, uh. A ghastly spectacle, but the soul of the cat now lives in the stoat. So that technically means I can feed off a stoat while the stoat can still attack. So, I mean, uh, whatever. Behold my totem, it inscribes my canine cards with the airborne sigil. <laughs> He's completely insane. You see that, right? No care for the rules. Pathetic, really. Only keeps me around to watch me suffer. No worries. So let's see, what does he got? He's got the coyote, but airborne. We're gonna have to get rid of them, clearly. Um... The stoat needs a sacrifice, so, yeah. But which one is worse? They're both bad. They're just equally bad. So I could... Back on the board. We need one more squirrel. My totem has granted my coat to power of flight, so he goes right over. Ah. We need a squirrel. And maybe do this. But we're going to be definitely killing both of them, so it shouldn't matter. Meh, meh. Shouldn't matter. I shouldn't have to sacrifice any of these right now. We just got to make sure everything is in the way to cover up the board as much as possible. So you put the squirrel... And then, boppity boopity boop. He has the power of flight, though, so... We'll still attack him and balance out the board. In this instance, it's like... <laughs> empty hand. Um... Snapper. I mean... We'll attack and do crazy damage, though. So far, see, everything I've been doing is, is pretty good. Impressive. You may yet survive this ordeal. But when we get to the bear, it'll be the real challenge. The proud wolf. I already have too many of these. Uh, another cat. And a... The hell are these mushrooms? No, seriously. Why the mushrooms? Is he trying to tell me I have these and to collect everything? Maybe. I'll, I'll get the cat since I don't have a cat anymore. Um, what did this mean? Was that sacrifice? I know the bonfire is something weird. I'll, I'll avoid it this time. 
Ah, uh, yeah, this again. All right. I could do another sack. That would be. Hmm. If we do sparrow, though. Hmm. Yeah, sure. yeah. Flying cat. That'd be weird. If I had a flying cat, <laughs> flying river. <laughs> Just imagine flying turtle. I mean, yeah, Super Mario, fucking Koopas. I turn into a Koopa. Flying wolf though. Three damage and flies over. Flying cat would be hilarious only because the cat would not attack. It'd just be airborne flying. And I, I'm guessing air, airborne attack airborne, like they collide like land and land. But if the cat's airborne and there's a land animal, the cat's just never going to get attacked. But the, ta the cat never attacks, so it's a waste of a, a space, technically. Well, why even give it to that one? It's just like, I don't know. Flying turtle would be hilarious, but its attack power is too weak. So, wolf makes sense. Flying wolf, that's spooky. It's three damage. You can't go wrong with three damage. Because again, you put the wolf where a boulder is? Come on. The problem is these stupid trees. So he's got, yeah, the grizzly. Mm. Um, I'd be attacking over the grizzly, so let's see. The grizzly does stupid damage, though. Um, I need to kill this squirrel. Mighty Leap. A card bearing the sigil will block an opposing creature being the airborne sign? The airborne sigil? Opposing creature bearing the airborne sigil. So it blocks flying creatures, I guess. Okay. The problem is it's my way of putting things down. Hmm. If I put a cat, I wouldn't be able to kill that. I can't... This is probably the point in time when I need to... This isn't the boss, but this is where I lost, wasn't it? I think this is the exact same spot, but I swear it was the boss. But well, this grizzly is like... I lost to a grizzly bear for sure. Um, I need something to at least do damage to the grizzly. Mm. And I don't want to take up a space, so I'm going to break out one of the squirrels. No, 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 not the cat. Not the cat. Not, not yet. Squirrel... Wolf. Oh, the flying wolf. Um. Maybe. Then he'll attack the bird if need be. Hmm. And he'll kill the bird. The problem is, obviously, then. I can I. You were lacking sacrifices in the Grand Fruit. Yeah. This could have been a mistake, but we'll see. We'll see. This is dangerous. But we already have the heads up. Problem is... Ugh. Ugh. Alright, um... Let me think about this. Not too hard, of course. <laughs> but I need something to take the damage. And the problem is the bear needs to get rid of the fucking trees. But I need to throw something. I, I, need, I need the stove. Fuck. It's problematic. Everything requires two fucking sacrifices. Maybe I'll need to sacrifice the cat. Mm. Desperate times, man. Desperate times. I didn't think you'd really do it. We need something to block this stupid fucking bear, because when that grand fur goes, then I'd have the space. So, you know what? I, I need to survive. Because I, I don't have anything that's just one sacrifice. I need the stoat. Oh, wait. It, it went over the sparrow? Okay. You got rid of the fucking thing now. Um, I need a squirrel, don't I? No. If I got the stoat, then I'd put down a cat. There's two bears now! And another sparrow coming. Ugh, um... Man, I... I if I do, I... I man. <laughs> There's a way out for both of us. It's somewhere in this foul cabin. 
Okay. Anyways, he, he's definitely going to die, though, unfortunately. I mean, actually... Hmm... I want to sacrifice the wolf. He does damage. Ah, uh, fuck me though. The cast is gonna die no matter what. Uh, the cat also needs a sacrifice. I should wait. Then that's weird. I need a squirrel. Fuck. Ugh. The sprout does very little damage, but the wolf does good damage. But four and four, I'm fucked. See, this is hard with the kind of deck I have. I need a lot more one sacrifice cards. Ah. Hmm. Mm. This could be a, a giant mistake, but I'm gonna probably start fucking things around. Cause either way, if I don't block the bears, I die. There's a way to win this, but you need to have nice conditions. Um. If I had the stow and the cat on board, I'd be able to constantly sacrifice things that need to health and get the wolf and shit there, so... The stow would be great... here. No, I'm not sure. The cat... and then... maybe the snapper. Maybe. The snapper or the wolf? Um, either way, the wolf will die in one hit. The turtle will at least survive once. So it'll delay the inevitable at the very least. There we go. I survived a round. Squirrel. And then... Boopity boopity. Shoopity boopity. See, they just look at these constant bears! <laughs> what, am I, what am I supposed to do? This overwhelming amount of bears! Ugh. Mm. Yeah. Using this as a learning opportunity may be the only way to mitigate my disappointment. Fetch me the candlestick. Maybe I should actually wait. Is that the time when I sh like oh, I was going to die and I shouldn't have wasted everything? Probably. I think I already forgot. Candle. Candle. I, I probably already messed it up because I, I I think I had to hold things off till later. There you go. Okay. Yes, yes, I, I, I get it. Those are my mistakes. Yeah. I'm boned. We need that backpack. Fuck the turtle. Raven! That's sexy. The conniving raven, a blade upon the skies. Raven? Hell yeah. And the backpack. That'll help me for the boss. A boulder! Scissors. You may cut up one of my cards. And I'll choose one. Uh, I don't want boulder, no. A gust from this may lift your creatures into the air, if only for a turn. A powerful item. Turn this, and I'll skip my next turn. It's bleeding. Yield three blood if you can ignore the... Meh. And tear up another card. Oh. Three blood. But the goat needs blood for it to give three blood. I don't have any creatures that need three blood. I don't think the raven needed three blood. I don't think. I don't think so. But this is. Hmm. Hmm. Eh. Goat. Feeling overburdened enough with the full I three items you carried on. Let's try it! Let's hope to win without losing. Let's try. Now he gets all into the LARPing mode. The trees seemed clo to close around you as a chill mist descended. In the distance you could hear the clinking of metal on stone. A hobbled figure stood in your path. 
Yeehaw, this was the prospector. Let's see. Let's see if we can do it. Coyote and the pack mule. Oh yeah, the pack mule. If I kill him, I get tons of cards. For the boulder there, a squirrel there, and the cat. Hmm. I mean, I can't really do anything but really put down the cat, so I mean... Hmm. Yeah. Pack mule, I really gotta kill it. Mmm. -hmm. Squirrel. Mmm, squirrel. Okay. Wait. If it has two, would it die? I guess so. It needs two blood. So if it has three blood, man, yeah, okay. Go. What if I put the goat there? Eh, later. This is fine. No, my kitty! My kitty cat! Ah! Mm. I need my goat. Okay, we need to pick something first. Another wolf! I need to win this boss fight, so, you know what? Oh yeah, the goat. But it, would it kill it, I guess? It wants one blood, but there's two blood. Would it really kill it? Yeah, it really does. All right. Whatever. That is probably a huge mistakes, but whatever. I can't use the scissors to cut the pack meal because it's too thick, if I recall. Hmm. We need more squirrels. Can I cut it? There are no cards of mine that you can cut. Not yet. Mole. What does a mole do? When an empty space would be struck, a card bearing the sigil will move to that space, perceive the strike instead. Hopefully the pack wheel comes back. I remember getting the kill before. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's the flying one too. Ah, the raven. He's cool. He's strong. Hmm, but what if? What if? Wait, is that made of flying rock? It's a fucking flying rock, Jesus Christ. Anyways. I hope you didn't think it would be that easy. There's gold! No, not the gold! No! Not this again! Oh, I just remembered he did that shit. Fucking piece of shit. I forgot that. Irritating. Well... What more can I do, man? Ah, oh, fucking bloodhound. Get him. More like a gold hound, but, you know... When an opposing creature is placed opposite to an empty space, a card bearing the sigil will move to that empty space. <laughs> He's doing the prospector again, easy boss. The mule's key. I mean, if I could get to him. He needs blood. No, not the adder. Mm. Mm. Where should I put the squirrel? Mm. Yeah, fuck your bloodhound. Wait, what the fuck more can I do right now? <laughs> <laughs> Slow.
slowly winning. I mean, the wolf is... Huh. Nice. The, I, I'd love the pack fuel, because then I'd get the cards. I'm not sure if it's temporary, like, only for this fight. I think it's only for this fight. Allow me to light your candles once more. I won't be killing you quite yet. Yay! Miner's Bane. It was, a uh, Defeat the Prospector. You're in the first in a while to overcome a boss. As a reward, you are granted an opportunity to select a rare card. Choose carefully. Is it just... I get to pick one, or is it just... We'll see. The uninspiring Gek. Perhaps you can find a use for it. There's a dinosaur thing on the top left. Maybe it has, like, an evolution? Uninspiring Gek. There's, like, a questionable icon on the top left. It's weak. It's different. It's got vines on the border. Ureuli. This level of brutish strength needs no explanation. Four blood for a fucking behemoth. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'd need to have the f a full deck of blood. Or to sacrifice a full deck to make this dude who would be, like, unstoppable. Imagine making him a flyer, too. A largely unimpressive specimen. What's the time mean? Fledgling. A card bearing the sigil will grow into a more powerful form after one turn. So we don't even know what it would turn into. God damn it. I'm not sure what that... No, no, I... Well, I didn't mean to do that. Fuck. I wanted to click to look at the card closely again. God damn it. I made a mistake then. Fuck me. With the sound of the prospector's pickaxe still ringing in your ears, you crafted on carried onwards. Hmm. The rank smell of rot and mold permeated the humid air. Every step forward was answered by some nearby slip or slither. You tread cautiously into the wetlands. The problem... I mean, it, it picking the behemoth and picking the larva would have been the choices I would have made. Um, the, the thing is, like with the larva, it evolves, so we don't know what its adult form is. It could be really good. It could be, you know, the, the underdog of the deck. It could be a rare card that is awesome because it will evolve into something that's really damn good. It could evolve into something that's mediocre. We don't know. What I have loved the behemoth. Well, yeah, seven to seven. That that just like destroys them. Imagine making it into a flyer. It's like, oh hey, sacrifice everything, make it a flyer. It will attack them over everything. It looks like it that would break the game, but I mean, I really don't think the developer would let that happen as if it's some oversight, you know? Like a lot of people would be like, Whoa, flying Yeti thing. OP, I mean, but I, I I don't think the developer would just let that happen without there being like, you know, things blocking the way from making it so that Yeti thing would be like just easy to do. Like you get it quickly, you sacrifice, you throw it on the board, boom, instant win every single time. I feel like there'd be something always in the way, you know, like obstacles, boulders, trees, or the bosses just, you know, using the prospector's pickaxe to turn things into gold, and then your yeti's fucking gone, sort of shit. That shit'll probably just happen no matter what. But, one thing I'm gonna do before continuing, and possibly ending the episode, because it's already been 30 minutes somehow, you, when, time flies when you're having fun. But, uh, the, the puzzle that I know is... I don't know time. I just know... I remember. Where's the rules of rule book? Rule book. Rule book. There's a code in the rule book. Because I can't remember the combination. Hmm. I'd love to figure out what's in a lot of these things. I'm. Hmm. The rule book usually I think is behind us, but it's not visible right now. Rule book. Mm, no, whatever. We get a new card. Oh, rule book. I know there is. Wait. Is this for the clock? Maybe. Clock hand. 
I'm gonna write these things down because that symbol that looks like a stamp could be for the clock puzzle. So I will uh, draw it and try to figure it out. It looks like I looked through the entire book and it flipped all the way around to the clock. The clock symbol. Because I think this is only one symbol that we need, but we need three others for every single hand. Like, that's just one thing. The ordinary porcupine sharp quills await those who dare attack it, so it's got a thorns thing to it. I mean, that's cool. The watchful bullfrog, it leaps in the way of attacking flyers. Pretty cool. Ah, oh, elusive otter! It submerges itself during my turn. Oh, well, that's cool. That's different. We need more attack cards, because as you'd figure out, we have like infinite squirrels to pocket from, but we don't have enough attack cards. We have the raven, we have the stoat, we have two fucking wolves, we have a sparrow and the raven, which I already probably said, and then the snapping turtle. We don't have much. As soon as they're dead, I have no attacks, because like, at that boss, I only had the stoat left. Everything else was the squirrels using, using the squirrels as meat bags, punching bags. So we need something competent. Bullfrog Zo. A card bearing the sigil will block an opposing creature bearing the airborne sign. So it means it'll jump in the way? But does it mean they can... They, yeah, it should mean then, yeah. So if it's a land thing, land things attack flyers. Hmm. Thorns though. Once a card bearing the sigil is struck, the strikers then dealt a single point of damage. The problem is just one point of damage doesn't seem like it's really worth it unless the creature played has just one health or does one attack. So it doesn't die and it takes one damage and then it has to attack again and then take a second point of damage of thorns. This one though, it submerges itself during the while submerged opposing creature attack its owner. So this thing will just never die. Its ability of waterborne might be usable in a sacrifice like what if we made the Yeti submergible? But, with that said and done, eh, we're gonna leave it there. There's nothing I can do in this house because we can't access the... Hmm... Not sure. Because there's three of these. We have to figure out the puzzle, but we, we clearly just don't have enough information right now. I'm sure the safe combination is gonna be the same from what it was in the demo, and I could just look it up. You know what, I'm curious, I, I, I wanna see. Oh shit! Wait, piece of poo? What? Piece of poo? It's like, it's clear I'm not meant to be in here yet, so I guess this is, I see a big hunk of poo because I'm not meant to go in there yet. So they, they know I cheated to get in here, so they give me poo instead. It's like, it's not really cheating though, but I did look at my demo playthrough in the exact same code. Maybe it'll be transformed later. Or I broke the, or I broke it. Because when you look in the book, it's actually the mighty leap where, where it, like the ink blocks and a piece of tape is covering the numbers. But the numbers are the exact same from the demo. But I don't recall there being a big chunky brown piece of poo in there. I have no idea. Maybe it's, maybe it's made out of wood. Who knows? Anyway, we're going to leave it here. And uh, just leave it for another time. Wait. Last saved one minute ago. I don't know what the times three means. Alter deck. Oh, that'll have to be for later. But anyways, let's leave it here. I hope you enjoyed. Look forward to more. I'll definitely be playing the crap out of this. I'd play it in a stream, honestly. But I've been having trouble doing streams at the very least because of my sleeping schedule and trying to fix it and everything else. And eh. I'm sure it'll be just a fun thing to play and record on the, while trying to find other games, horror games, and other things. But I hope you enjoyed, look forward to more in the description, I'll definitely be playing more. If you did enjoy, please leave a like, comment, hit that subscribe button, become a Fluscarber. Hit the notification down below for updates of my videos, thank you for watching, until the next time.